Welcome to the Retirement Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Greg Gonzalez. My goal for the podcast is to help you live a better life in retirement by giving you the tools and information you need in a language that you can understand. I have the great fortune of being a financial advisor in St. Louis, Missouri, helping people 50 and older plan for a dream retirement. And what does that encompass? Well, that's checking all the boxes and making sure they're prepared for that dream retirement that they envision. Do they know when they're going to take their social security? Do they have a plan for paying off their home or maybe their second home, their vacation home? Do they really need life insurance in retirement? What about that pension? Should you take the lump sum or some of the annuity options for that pension? What about their taxes in retirement? How do they optimize their tax planning so they have more money in their pocket over time? What about health insurance in retirement? How does Medicare work? How should they be investing their retirement assets in retirement? Do they need long-term care insurance? And what about legacy planning or beneficiary planning? So at the end of the day, your resources go to the people and causes that you really care about while also eliminating the probate court and taxes by all means necessary. These are all topics of previous episodes on the Retirement Made Easy podcast, so you can check those out. We talk about these conversations with clients every single day here at the office, but I also want to share these lessons and conversations in this podcast known as the Retirement Made Easy podcast. So if you're a new listener, this is a weekly podcast where we release episodes at the end of every week and you can enjoy the content. Some may be more applicable than others. And if something's not applicable to you, we'll just skip that episode and move on to the next one. And also, I wanted to remind listeners, if you want to listen to previous episodes and you want the free resources that I make available to everybody, visit my website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. That's retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. You can check out, like I said, all the past episodes. There are over 60 different episodes at this point. And then in the resources tab, I have all of my helpful downloadable resources, such as my tax planning guide, such as my retirement budgeting tool, my couple's guide to a dream retirement, as well as my retirement secret sauce, all there on the website for free. You can download it and enjoy it. And if you have any questions about your own retirement that you're struggling with, maybe it's a 401k question, inheriting mom or dad's IRA question, whatever it may be. Maybe it's social security. If it's something I can help with, at the bottom of the website, you can submit your question. It'll say, ask Greg a question. I'd be happy to help in any way I can. On today's episode, I wanted to talk about recent conversations I've been having with some clients that are concerned about the current state of the economy and the stock market with the coronavirus and the variants looming. You've got the booster shots coming out. At the time of the recording of this podcast, there's over 688,000 deaths in the United States caused by the coronavirus. That's a huge number, and it's a growing number still. It's really, really a sad deal. You've got the economy out there right now. Some reports are saying that there's 10 million open jobs in this country that they can't fill at this point. You've got restaurants closing down simply because they can't get enough workers and staff. Congress is voting to keep the government essentially open to raise the debt ceiling. And they're having discussions. How much are we going to raise the debt ceiling? How much is enough? We just can't keep printing money because future generations are really going to suffer. So I put together this episode of reasons not to invest. There's always reasons that people come up with not to invest, right? Every generation comes up with reasons not to invest. So what I did is I looked back at all the different reasons there are not to invest, and I wanted to come up with a historical perspective. So I looked at the baby boomers, right? The baby boomers are 70 to 80 million people born between 1946 and 1964. There were approximately 80 million. We don't know how many deaths and people that immigrated in that range. So that's why we say 70 to 80 million people. Estimates around 77 million last I saw. So let's look at together, let's imagine that oldest baby boomer out there, born in 1946. So they turned 75 this year. So let's think back, 1946, okay, 
let's look at the market and what happened to our economy since 1950. Let's just round up a couple of years and start at 1950, okay? There was the Dow Jones Industrial Average is one of the most common stock market indices that's out there. It's really 30 of the largest U.S. companies, huge companies, right? And so the Dow Jones was established in 1896. So it's been around a long, long time. Some of those companies have changed, have come and gone, but the index is still the same. So looking back at 1950, again, the first baby boomer was born in 1946. So in 1950, there were a ton of reasons not to invest. The Dow Jones back then, if you're wondering, was priced at 198.89. So $198.89. So in the 1950s, and my grandfather told me stories of this growing up, he was in the Korean War. He was a medic in the Korean War, and he survived by the skin of his teeth is what he told me. But Korean War was going on in the 1950s. What were the reasons not to invest? Well, the C Korean War went on until 1953. You had 54, over 54,000 Americans died in the Korean War. In 1954, you had the Soviets. They dropped the first hydrogen bomb. It frightened Americans. They, Americans were frightened to death with the Soviets testing a fusion bomb, first ever. They were, Americans across the country were scared to death in 1954. In 1957, the Soviets launched the first satellite Sputnik. Americans were losing the space race. They were terrified. So with all that going on, all those terrible news stories, how did the Dow Jones Industrial Average do in the 1950s? Well, it did tremendously well. It was up 241%. It went from 198 to 679 at the end of 1959. And again, I'll restate, this time is not different, but every generation is looking for reasons not to invest. Let's look at the 1960s. The 1960s it started with JFK walking down Pennsylvania Avenue and ended with the man walking on the moon. Remember 1962, you had the Cuban Missile Crisis and what a disaster that was? 100 miles from Florida. During that time, that 13 days, Americans were absolutely scared to death. You had the civil rights movement in the 60s. Our heroes didn't die in the 60s. Our heroes were shot dead in the streets. John F. Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King. Let's not forget the Vietnam War in 1968. More than 58,000 Americans died. And then do you remember the Six-Day War when Egypt, Syria, Jordan all attacked Israel? And with all that horrible news going on, the Dow Jones Industrial Average again closed in the 1950s at 679, opened in the 1970s at 809. So it was up about 20%, if your calculator is correct. The 70s were absolutely horrible. This was the greatest recession since the Great Depression of the late 1920s, early 1930s. The 1970s, you had the fall of South Vietnam, you had the OPEC oil embargo. The price of oil actually quadrupled from 1973 to 1974. Price of gas in the United States doubled in one month. I mean, you couldn't buy gas on the weekends. You had all the gas rationing. Conservatism at that time was very popular. People were being told not to turn on their Christmas lights. Save your energy. 1973, you had President Nixon that resigned when he knew that he would be impeached after the Watergate scandal, and many say that resignation absolutely devastated our country. Then in 1979, you had the Iranian hostage situation. You had 52 Americans held in captivity for 442 days. That was an absolutely horrible decade. The Dow Jones started at about 809 in 1970. It ended 10 years later at 824, practically flat. Then let's look at the 1980s. The Dow Jones Industrial Average opened at 838. Well, let's think about what happened in the 1980s. Technology was booming. You had 14% inflation. You had 21% mortgages in 1980. That was where it topped out. And you had 6.3% unemployment is where it topped out in 1980. Black Monday in 1987, one day the stock market was down 23%. And in three months in 1987, the market had lost 33.5%. Then in 1990, 
based mostly, the crash was based mostly on fears of the U.S. dollar devaluing. In the 1980s, you had Ronald Reagan as president. He was the one that campaigned saying, you never negotiate with terrorists. Reagan was shot in the 1980s. The Pope was shot in the 1980s. The Challenger exploded in the 1980s. Remember the Iran-Contra affair? But after all that, the 1980s, again, the Dow Jones opened at 838. It closed at 2753, 2,753. That was a over 228% gain during that decade. The market did extremely well during that decade. What about the 1990s? The 1990s, remember Y2K? It started off with the Gulf War, the Civil War in Yugoslavia, a lot of war. The Oklahoma City bombing, that was in 1995. I remember watching that on the TV. That was absolutely horrible. You had the Soviets that were defaulting on all their bonds. You had the Mexican currency crisis. In the 1990s, our president of the United States, Bill Clinton, was impeached. But you know what? At the end of the decade, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was priced at 11497 from back in January of 1990 when it was priced at 2,810. Huge jump in the 1990s. Huge, huge jump. The market did absolutely fantastic in the 1990s. But then came the 2000s, right? 2000 to 2009, absolutely terrible decade, right? You had 9-11, largest attack on U.S. soil since 1941. We had the war in the Middle East going on, global war on terrorism, real estate foreclosures, We're up 81% year over year from 2008 to 2009. Unemployment actually peaked in October of 2009. And this is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics at right at 10% during that time. We had Hurricane Katrina during that decade on top of that. And with all that going on, this is what was called the lost decade, right? The Dow Jones actually opened in January of 2000 at 11 1,357 ended 10 years later at 10,428. So it actually lost value in that decade, right? It was down about 8%. What came next? The 2010s, right? They ended with the coronavirus. And as we speak, coronavirus in the United States has been responsible for 688,000 deaths in this country, right? We had the legalization of marijuana in the 2010s. We had the failed impeachment of President Trump during that time. In 2011, the U.S. credit rating had been reduced, had been dropped from AAA. The first time that happened since 1941. We had the China trade tariffs, which were supposed to crush our economy. Do you remember that? We had the wildfires in California. Four million acres burned. We had the Sandy Hook shooting. 28 were left dead. We had the Las Vegas shooting. 61 people were left dead. And with all that said, from 2010 to 10 years later, the Dow Jones Industrial Average went from 10,583 to 28,538. Today, as I'm recording this podcast, if you're curious where the Dow Jones Industrial Average stands, it's around 35,000 today. So 2010 to present day, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has done phenomenal. But there's always a headline out there, and there's always a reason people come up with of reasons not to invest. But again, think back to 1950, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was at 198. Today, it's 35,000. And that's right during a baby boomer's lifetime. But if you think back and look what we've been through, whether it's the something like a terrorist attack like 9-11. Think back to all the wars we've been through, the hurricanes, the natural disasters, high inflation, low inflation, high unemployment, low unemployment, low interest rates, high interest rates, high gas prices, low gas prices. It just seems like there's always an event or there's always a reason that people come up with and they lose sight of their long-term goals. And and they lose sight of how resilient this country, this economy, this stock market is over time. It's just you have to give it enough time. It's kind of like these big, beautiful oak trees that you see. They didn't get like that overnight, right? A lot of oak trees don't start producing acorns until they're 20 or 30 years old. 
But while they're developing and while they're growing, man, those oak trees are going to go through storm after storm after storm, the wind, the rain, the heat, the cold. But you know what? After enough time, those oak trees produce acorns and they give you so much shade. They're big, beautiful trees. And I know there's still people out there and I, I get calls here and there where people are concerned about the market, what's going on and what's going to cause the market to go down. Well, there's always going to be a reason. I mean, think back just a handful of years ago, there was the Boston Marathon bombing. That was absolutely terrible. But you know what? With everything we've been through, yes, it will be a hiccup here and there. It will be a setback. And we know they're going to come, right? But just think back to our 75-year-old friend born in 1946. They have seen a lot through the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, 80s, the 90s, 2000s, 2010s. There is a lot that they've seen. We went over all these different examples of reasons not to invest. And still, the stock market, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which I just use as an example that people would recognize, it act- absolutely flourished, not through every single decade, but over time, the trend was certainly up. So my best advice for everybody out there is keep your f- mind, keep your focus on the end, your long-term goals. You want to retire and have a house and in Florida in Destin, Florida, or maybe it's a condo there. You want to have your house back home paid off and you want to be debt free and you want to be able to live and travel comfortably in retirement. Keep your mind, keep your focus on that, on your vision, your goals, and get your mind off these news articles and these headlines. And they use these words like the market crashes and the market plunges and the market soars. And they, but they're just words. Think about that. But they're scary when you see that, right? The market plunges a thousand points. It's scary. And that's what makes people get emotional and change their mind on their long-term goals. They sacrifice their long-term goals because of short-term fears that they have. And you don't want to do that. There was a story of a guy that was talking to an old farmer. And he asked him, he said, you know, we've had a lot of rain this year. I bet your crops are doing great. How's your corn crop coming? And the farmer said, I didn't plant any. And he said, well, why not? He said, well, I was afraid of corn blight. He said, well, what about your bean crop, your soybean crop? He said, I didn't plant that, any of that either. He said, well, why not? He said, well, I was afraid it wouldn't rain. He said, well, what did you plant? He said, I didn't plant anything. I just played it safe. So moral of the story is don't let your current fears jeopardize your long-term success. I hope this episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast has been helpful. If you have questions, want to send me love mail, hate mail, go to my website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. I will see you next week. And remember, always dream big. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, please consult your attorney, tax advisor, or financial advisor prior to investing. This is a hypothetical example and is not representative of any specific investment. Your results may vary. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices mentioned are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. The Smart Vester Pro Program is a directory of investment professionals. Neither Dave Ramsey nor SmartVestor are affiliates of St. Louis Retirement Advisors or LPL Financial. There is no guarantee that a diversified portfolio will enhance overall returns or outperform a non-diversified portfolio. Diversification does not protect against market risk. All investing involves risk, including loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. Securities and advisors services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, Memra FINRA, SIPC. 